Hey guys, I want to give you an update on the uh, fabrication of the boot cowl. So you can see we got the boot cowl in place. It's a three-piece boot cowl, which makes it really nice for maintenance. Um, you can you can remove the screws. Um, they're all attached with nut plates, and you can remove the two bottom pieces of the boot cowl to get underneath the floorboards to replace springs on rudder pedals, um, do any wiring. Anything like that that's down there that you would want to get to without pulling the entire engine and boot cowl off. Uh, so nice improvement. It was easy to do since I was making a new boot cowl anyway. We've got a new instrument panel, which I'll show you in a little bit. It, the firewall is original. It's the original galvanized firewall. Um, inspected it, and it's in uh, good operating condition. Uh, because I don't have beading tools, um, to make a beaded flange like the uh, boot cowls have to connect to the uh, firewall. I just left the a piece of the original boot cowl. Um, this is commonly done. You leave about an inch and a half flange of the original boot cowl. And then you have something to fasten the new boot cowl to uh, without having to uh, fabricate that beaded flange. I'm probably using the wrong term, but um, bead roller. Have a little bead roller or the crimpers um, that make that uh, 90 degree um, crimped edge, which uh, gets riveted to the firewall. Anyway, um, still have to mount the windshield. Obviously, I've received the windshield um, from LP Aero. I ordered it through Aircraft Spruce, and um, I'm thankful I got the right windshield because there's there are two different windshield possibilities for Super Cubs. Um, originally, this Super Cub was a 90 horsepower. Uh, Super Cup with no flaps. Uh, over the years, it was upgraded um, to have flaps and have a 150 horsepower light combing engine, which changed um, the cowling and the windshield. So when I ordered the windshield, they always ask you when you order it what the serial number of the airplane is so that they can make sure they get you the right windshield. So I had to put in the notes, yeah, don't, don't um, send me the windshield for this serial number. Send me the windshield for a 150 horsepower modification that this airplane's been upgraded to. And uh, luckily, they read my notes and got me the right windshield, and I'm happy because I don't have to uh, send it back. Anyway, I've got some uh, lines kind of marked on the boot cowl where I've mocked up the windshield and uh, kind of set it on there in place and, um, and uh, taken some measurements and scribed some some curves on there where we're going to uh, start fitting and making sure um, that we're going to drill the holes in the right place. Anyway, that's the update on the boot cowl. Alright guys, I want to talk a little bit about STCs. And uh, first of all, I, I want to say that I love the fact that me or you or anyone can design a modification to a certified aircraft and get it approved by the FAA. I love the fact that the FAA makes that possible. They've done this for a long time. There's been some fantastic modifications for Super Cubs over the years. I mean, just many, many really, um, really smart people have put together some really nice modifications. I love the fact that I can go out and select one and purchase it, and it's been it's been tested and it's been vetted and it keeps the uh, certification on the airplane. I really love the fact that a lot of these STCs um, increase safety, they allow you to fly, fly uh, slower on landing, um, decrease your kinetic energy, which is a big safety factor, especially um, when you're trying to land short in uh, this type of aircraft. There are many STCs that, um, that increase strength uh, of the of the airplane, increase your payload, um, all kinds of modifications that just increase the utility of the aircraft. Having said that, um, I did make a list of all the STCs, my little uh, dream wish list, and the cost of each one, and added it up at the bottom, and it came out to uh, somewhere around fifty-eight thousand dollars. That's not happening. Okay, so. Just to be uh, uh, perfectly upfront, you know, this this is not going to be a project where I incorporate all the latest.
greatest SDCs into this Super Cup. As a matter of fact, I will probably not buy one SDC uh, that this that this aircraft doesn't already have. Um, it doesn't have very many SDCs. It does it does uh, like I say it was upgraded um, to add flaps in the past, and it was upgraded to the 150 horse engine. Other than that, oh, and it does have three inch extended gear and some bush wheels. Really, I can't think of much else that this plane has been uh, modified for. So I just want to kind of set the tone for this project. Um, to be perfectly honest, uh, the word the STC stands for a Supplemental Type Certificate. It's a great program, but to me, on this particular project, STC is stay the course. <laughs> because if I get sidetracked and try to come up with money to um, and figure out how to add uh, baggage doors. I would love to have a baggage door, but uh, there's just so many things. They just start adding up. They take time. They take money. It's going to be all I can do to um, afford to get this plane in the air um, without any SDCs. And the uh, Piper Super Cub is a fantastic airplane. Um, it's you know it came out of the factory a fantastic airplane. So I don't feel bad at all about having a, a fairly unmodified Super Cub and putting one together. I know there's all kinds of arguments about, well, the, you want to increase your safety, you want to increase your utility, you want to think about your mission, all those arguments. But my argument is I just want to get it put back together and flying so that I can actually go flying. So this channel um, is going to document the, the, uh, the um, building of this Super Cub, uh, I should say the uh, rebuilding of the Super Cub, and it's going to emphasize um, that it's going to be done on a budget. And matter of fact, I'm actually going to share with you guys um, the cost of this project so that as, as the uh, weeks go by and I make progress on the project, I will share with you how much I'm spending um, to get it done. Because I think that and a lot of times, if, uh, if a guy's kind of wondering if this is something that he can do, is something that he's interested in, or she, um, sometimes you're looking at uh, a lot of YouTube videos and you're, and you're thinking, wow, that's, uh, that's got to be a lot of money um, for some of the stuff that people are doing. And it is. And a matter of fact, it's quite a bit of money just to uh, rebuild a certified Super Cub back to original stock um, shape. So anyway, um, I hope you uh, I hope you appreciate um, following me on this project and kind of seeing uh, how, we, how we can uh, get a Super Cub back in the air um, on a budget and have an idea how much that budget would actually be. So here's the new instrument panel. Uh, I've got one instrument missing. You can see it's uh, a tachometer. And it's because it has uh, broken glass. And as you probably know, um, that has to be repaired by a certified instrument shop. So that instrument will be going out and getting repaired. Uh, but I will say that having that one instrument out of the panel has uh, given me um, some pretty good access with my arm through that hole for um, helping to install the boot cowl. So even though I kind of did that, um, not thinking about the access part of it, that's a good tip if you're uh, having to get back in the, behind a panel and just remove the tachometer is a pretty easy one to remove. Or maybe there's another instrument that uh, in your particular panel. Um, I do actually want to show you uh, something on the boot cowl. This is, um, this is something that's a lot of times um, removed on Super Cubs, especially in Alaska, because um, we've got this little air vent. This is actually a stock air vent that um, you can see the control right here next to my mixture. On the original Super Cubs, this, this was actually on the right side of the panel, and if I had if I'd studied it enough, I probably would have kept it over there. 
just to be just to be more stock and correct because I think Piper did a great job in their designs and I don't really uh, want to change things too much but I ended up putting it over here and it, it works okay but I just wanted to show that to you because you don't see those very often especially in Alaska where there's a lot of super cubs um, and uh, and that little vent there um, a lot of people get rid of them because sometimes if the seal goes bad, it'll leak in the rain, and, and, and that's going to leak water onto your instruments and radios, and that's not a good thing. Um, there is a little knob that you can reach under the instrument panel when you, when you close this, and you can, you can um, pull it shut and then lock the knob and turn the, and turn the little knob to tighten it down to keep it tight against its seal so you don't get uh, rainwater in there but I you know I'm in Louisiana I, I want to have all the airflow that I can get down here and so I chose to keep that uh, detail on the boot cowl